My childhood is very unique. I grew up in a very bohemian artistic lifestyle and my parents were counterculturalist in the sense that they didn't want to necessarily go for uh, having the car, having the house, having the job, that they wanted to experience nature and the truth and beauty within that. Um, so we moved to the forest <laughs> and we all lived in a tent. My father built a room and we all moved into it, then added another room and another room and he built the house in the shape of a castle and we would have music and dance outside at night and the stars are out and the moon is out and we'd have a fire and so my early dancing experience was never for an audience per se it was you were dancing for the stars and the frogs and the crickets and you were dancing together and the feeling of being out with the breeze on your skin with the drums going with the, out the worrying of noise or cities or anything like this that it was just you in the forest with your family um, is something that I wish were more common and I didn't know wasn't common until uh, I left that. So then when I'm on stage performing then there's this other world that I'm bringing to this stage, this alternative. And so if people can see this alternative and they can be inspired then there's this sense of catharsis then to me that not inspiring your audience is the reason that I do this, to find this transformation that I experience and that people watching experience. Belly Dance grew up in Egypt and came into the nightclubs and then this was the preferred way of, of performing and dancing and it was all very glitzy and glamorous with high heels and beautiful jewelry and I think that left a lot of women out of the picture that they didn't identify with this and that there was something more visceral that they wanted to connect to. Yay! <laughs> oh, you too. Come in. Thank you. Bring it in and send it out. Tribal belly dance was a new dance form, but it feels like it's old because we love antique jewelry, antique textures, strange music, strange looks, strange dance, and strange and beautiful rather than pretty for the sake of being pretty. So this cabaret oriental performance is the light, but there has to be a darkness to balance that. And, and it's not a darkness in an evil sense or a dangerous sense, it's this darkness in this, this primal deep sense. So that's what Tribal Fusion explores. I love it, yeah. There's another um, aspect to Tribal Fusion Belly Dance and that's in that you construct the look of it. So the costuming and the jewelry that goes along with that, you have to make it because it doesn't just exist. You have to create it. And that to me is a whole nother art form that I love and I feel very passionate about. So I've gone around the world collecting ancient styles of jewelry. And so when you wear them and you wear this costume, it's your dance partner. There's this relationship that develops that brings out more of what I'm trying to express. Central part of the costume to go over the heart. <laughs> when you're training, your body and you're training your muscles, what you're endeavoring to do is get to a point where you don't any longer have to think about the contractions and the choreography and the combinations, that these are all surface things. You're connecting to a movement that already is existing. It's already there and you tap into it. You're connecting to something that's nature, something that's earth. And when you're barefoot and you're belly dancing, you're connected to the earth in this way that um, is very unique. I have a fascination with ancient dance, things that are very, very old. Um, belly dance is part of this sort of history of movement that celebrates the female body, and that's what's compelling to me, that there's something that's consistently gone on for thousands of years, and there's something within that that's broader than really any one of us can know, but when you participate within it, you feel yourself like a drop inside of an ocean.